Sean, is that you? How you doing? Hey, buddy. It's been a while since I've been in this basement. <laughs> we had a technical difficulty, so oh, we are Lord. not going to social distance this evening. Uh, at least the two of us. At anyway. least the two of us. We, the other feel, two, we feel uh, all right about our, it. Our social distancing, but welcome to Thursday night. Welcome it to is Thursday. a happy Thursday. Thirsty yes. Thursday live with Scotch for Dummies. Here's two of us. We got to get the other two in here. We got a great for show for you tonight. We've got a gentleman that's going to come on talk to us about the distribution network in this country. And how the liquor makes it from the distillery to the store. I think you're going to need a drink for this one. Hey guys, it is Scotch Ford. There we go. <laughs> Woo. What's going yeah. on? Hey, you know what is we haven't had technical difficulties like this on a Thursday night in a long time, man. You have no everybody, you don't know how bad we've been scrambling in the last 15 minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we all live on the same street or it'd be a problem i yeah. can tell you right now it would have been bad yeah it would have been scotch two dummies on the show oh my gosh <laughs> i don't touch anything well, i don't know if drew had been scotch one dummy because drew would be the only one there with uh with no how to run the thing <laughs> so hey guys happy thursday happy yeah. thursday happy thursday you got the clink <laughs> <laughs> who we got online uh, before we get into the show we got a guest that we want to get on here we don't want to leave them in the green room too long if you know what i mean but uh let's say hi to everybody all right, let's see here. Oh, I'm not used to having having power. I don't normally log in on this side, man. Uh, <laughs> I actually I got him logged into StreamYards tonight. Oh, so it's nice didn't... to see it all up there at once, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know how you scroll on this damn thing. <laughs> so Bob H is in. Yeah. Everyone is in. Malt Minion. I kind of missed you guys in a Zoom call. I, I apologize for that, but I've been going crazy trying to get this thing to work. He says, hey, gang. Jimmy T. Hey, how you doing? Slow was one of the first ones in. Trooper Henry, the Blocklinger. Of course, Everwind. We saw him on the pre-show. Maybe a she? And Malt Minion. And Everwind. So uh, just a little education. For Sean, all you got to do is hit. You can click nah. it up there. But anyway. All right. Yeah, so I don't care about that. I'm myself something else. <laughs> so <laughs> Scotch, Alex Julian, Jason Coates, Greg Bowers. Oh, George K is in. Steve A. Oh, Kevin Red News. What? We have seen that guy since you became a father. <laughs> Don't worry about whiskey mystery. Just in time it. mysteries in there. Brands and and Sunday evening scotch are both in. That's amazing. Oh. Hi, Brandon. We didn't see <laughs> yeah. that in the pre-show. Bud here. Look at that little Bud Matthews yeah. in the picture. Oh my gosh! I've seen you forever, Bud. Those babies <laughs> are long long long. <laughs> crazy. Hey, so what's going on tonight? What we got? So we have. Uh, a guy that I've worked with for years that's coming on the show to talk to us about yes, uh, distribution networks um, and the distribution companies and kind of what they do because, you know, everybody talks about the distillery and they talk about their favorite liquor store. And in between there, there's a lot of steps to get that product from the distillery into your house. Um, so there's, you know, importers, if it's, uh, you know, something that's coming from outside the States. And, and there's a whole network of companies that buy those products from the importers and get them into the stores. And so, you know, that's something that we don't talk a lot about and nobody really discusses it much, but those guys are critical. Like they make a lot of decisions behind the scenes that directly affect what Absolutely. you get in your state, what you see on the shelf at your local liquor store, um, the kinds of products and the variety that they get. So, um, I thought it'd be interesting to bring somebody on who's who's been involved in that business for a long time and let him kind of talk us through it a little bit. I think bit. it'll be interesting even for the people outside of the States because they know their locale and what's going on. Like the Canadians up north, they, they deal with some some crazy Yeah, it's all state run. And state run. And so it, it'll be fun and, and educational for anybody, whether you know, you're in the States or not. Um, and it's going to be uh, – actually, I'm going to learn something about it too. I, we're probably all going to get a little upset about it. That's why I said you probably need to pour a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, 
Uh, what else we got? I, I have a blind review set up for these other three dummies. Obviously, I know what it is, but um, it's not a challenge. It's just a blind review. I want these guys to go through the whiskey. I'll give them a little information as they go through it, and at the end, we'll talk, you know, reveal what it is and, and get a score on it. I want to see what happens when they are evaluating a whiskey when they don't even know what it is and see if that actually uh, keeps the score a little more fair. I don't know. All right, we'll Something find fun. out. It'll be good. You ready to bring Mike in? You ready to bring Mike in? Yeah, let's bring him Tyler. in. Dude. There he is. <laughs> hey, Mike. Welcome to the show. Hey, Mike. What's going on? We can How hear are you. you. <laughs> we can hear you, man. Welcome to the show, man. Hey, so Hello. where where are you located? Uh, a, a brief, brief, brief history about you know, Indianapolis. Indianapolis, Indiana guy. You've been? Are you an Indiana guy your whole life? Born and raised here in Indiana. Actually, I was an Illinois boy for a while. Grew up in Peoria, Illinois. So Ooh, grew up right on the Illinois River. Telling you, they, 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 uh, right there were Peoria Heights where they had Paps Ribbon, where my dad worked at. Uh, a bunch of people worked at Caterpillar, and then a uh, Hiram Walker Distillery was right on, right on the well, Illinois River as well. So. Destined. You, you, you found your destiny in this job, then, huh? <laughs> you know, apple didn't fall far from the tree, they say. And this is my, my dad's case, the uh, cup from the keg. He worked at Paps for 25 years, so you know, it's all good. Nice man. I ain't had a Paps in a long time. You know that's kind of, Paps is now like uh it's a it's a hipster. It's, yeah, it's a hipster it's a drink. Hipster beer for the youngins, man. I it's just, super hipster, man. Super hipster. I laugh every time they every time I see one drink, I'm like, man, my old man used to pound down a case of that stuff when I was in. When I was in the <laughs> oh my gosh, that sounds about right. <laughs> So, Mike, can you kind of run people through like what distributors do and, and maybe some of the products that your particular company carries? Well, you know, you and I worked together for a long time. I've been in the beer business, liquor industry for two decades. So, um, and yeah, I know you guys are Scotch for W. So I've just, you know, just so the audience knows, I've sold a wide array of probably almost everything you guys have ever tasted. I would start with the Glens, you know, the Glen Livets of the world, Glen Fittits, Glen Meringue, Balvini, ba Beaumore, Lafroy, Ta you know, oh, uh, Dallas, uh, McAllen's, sold them, sold all of them. Um, and it's funny when I go to different states and I see different, we call it a mark, uh, like a different mark of another brand. And uh, it always blows away, like, how come I don't have that in my market? Well, you ask enough questions and you find stuff out, you're like, didn't test well in Indiana. It's, it's like how products get shipped into Indiana. It's, it's almost like a test kitchen. Um, like, ah, that, that, that didn't go well in Indiana. Or that's not going to move in Indiana. Um, you know, when importers and distributors across the nation, you know, they'll, they'd send stuff to New York. And I've shot, I've told you this. You're like, hey, Mike, am I going to see this in my market? I'm like, no, nope, go to Chicago, though. You'll see it there. Um, it, it's interesting. It's interesting how a brand actually makes it into the Indianapolis market compared to the Chicago market, compared to Orlando or Atlanta or Vegas. So um, a lot of it has to do with, does it test well in our particular market? Does it test well in our region? So, and it's as simple as that. So it's, it's a, basically a question of, you know, either your company or the, or the larger company that's selling to you doing some test marketing in the state and figuring out if it, if that particular item is going to move in that particular area. Correct. Now I work for R and DC. We're, at, we're the second largest distributor in the night in the United States. We're in 31 different States. Um, we actually just uh, merged with Young's market and they're out on the West coast. So we'll be up to about 37 different States. Southern wine and spirits is the largest. Um, they're in 41 States. So. But we don't talk about that. A lot of decisions are made in Houston and in Atlanta where like my or the actual mom and dad are actually at is what I call them. <laughs> <laughs> but so I don't understand the test. I mean, where's the stuff getting tested and how can we influence that? Right. <laughs> I mean, well, if you want to influence it, you better move to New York <laughs> or you better move to Chicago. Um, the, the only big test area is in um, I'll tell you another test area is Columbus, Ohio. I, I think I've told Sean this before. Columbus, Ohio is like the, the, the most diverse population for test kitchens, as I call it. Um, 
Columbus, Ohio, Ohio State University. So you have every diversity of every group that goes to Ohio State. Um, that's where like all of your chain restaurants go to. Before you see a chain restaurant in the state of Indiana or anywhere for that matter, it goes through Columbus, Ohio. Wow. Um, so Columbus, Ohio, for the strangest reason, is in that test kitchen for where alcohol goes to. So um, New York City, obviously, because that's where the cache place to go to. LA is the cache place. Vegas, Orlando, Atlanta, New Orleans. Those are like your big ones. Um, obviously, Nashville has recently become into that mix to where uh, we do a lot of test kitchen stuff there. And because it's become more diverse, but that's where your that's where it gets tested at. And then that's where they figure where it's going to go from there. So D, one of our subscribers just asked a question just on the tip of my mind, too. How do we volunteer to become a test kitchen? I'm mean, put our name in. Put Indianapolis in there. <laughs> I've been trying to get Sean for years in the test kitchen. Oh, really? Sean, you've been holding out on us? Oh, so you just threw him under the bus. It's on now. <laughs> you know, some of that, you know, I didn't know you guys. I just knew Sean from where, you know, from the many restaurants that he's ran. So Sean and I became friends many years ago. So that is good. And, and to be honest, Sean, listen, I'm going to give you guys some inside information. I've never told Sean this before. So my job is to sell mass amounts of liquor to restaurants and, and bars. So my job as a key account manager, I'm kind of like a liquor politician. Okay. So my job is to infiltrate into the actual bar itself, figure out who the manager is, and I find out what they like. Well, once I found out what Sean liked, I was like, shit, I got this. <laughs> I got a girl full of scotch. Like, so I would give Sean all my scotch. I'm like, Sean, I got something really nice for you. Um, by the way, I need you to pick up 25 cases of Deep Eddie Vodka in the meantime. But here's a bottle of, of uh, here's, a, here's a bottle of Balmore uh, 12. Or here's a, here's a, you know, here's a Belvini Caribbean cast. Take this home with you. But uh, I'm going to need 15 cases of Blue Chair Bay banana cream rum from you this week, too. But he was going to buy that anyway. True enough. <laughs> it's a good relationship that way. <laughs> it is. That's what I do. So, I mean, you do all kinds of, like, marketing stuff. I mean, your, your job isn't just to sell to the restaurant. It's also to get people to buy stuff once it gets into the restaurant, you know what I mean? So uh, like, what does that side of your job look like for like liquor stores and restaurants? Uh, part of my job as far as how to make something move is to get on the menu. So my job is to get a certain product on a menu. 70% uh, of people that roll into a restaurant don't know what they're gonna drink. Now, I don't know who those people are. I didn't make that number up because I know immediately what I was going to drink when I walked into a bar, but a lot of people don't know what they're going to drink. So my job is to get that drink on the menu so people look at it, they see it. Um, Sean, as you well know, I, I did a lot of tastings. I, I had you know semi-attractive girls that would walk around handing out samples of stuff to uh, try to encourage somebody to drink a product. So there's many ways for me to get liquid to lips, and that's really... It's a term in my industry. It's called liquid to lips. If I can get liquid to lips, I can move that product. Um, that's how we do you it in the, on, in the stores as well. Uh, that's that's how we do it in the liquor stores. I, it, we'll have tastings that go out there. And, you know, we've got a captive audience for the role in the liquor store. If I, if I needed to move like a Highland Park, I'll just throw out a random here. Highland Park 12. Um, hey, how am I going to move that product? Ah, I don't know. I got to get liquid to lips. How am I going to do that? A, I got to befriend my guy, Sean, who's running one of the hottest restaurants in the town, so he can put it on the menu so people can look at it, see it, get liquid to lips. Then, hey, Sean, do you mind if I have some semi-attractive individuals come in, pass out free shots of this stuff? Who's going to say no to that? Probably nobody. Um, and then I have the same people go into liquor stores and just with a bottle or two and hand out samples. That's, that's my job is to befriend people, to get them to like me, and let me use their vehicle to pedal my ways, you know, pedal my wares out of the trunk. <laughs> so, Mike, I got a question for you. What percentage of your yeah. time is spent in liquor stores as compared to bars and restaurants? You what now? What what percentage of your time is like focusing on restaurants versus and restaurants and bars versus like liquor stores and and uh, Costco's and Meyer Meyer and Kroger's and all those kinds of things? 
Well, for me, a hundred percent of my time goes into restaurants and bars. Okay. That, I, I'm key uh, we on premise. So I'm a dedicated on premise person. The on premise sector is the hardest place to actually move product. Because okay. when you sit down at the restaurant, you're going to get the meal and you have basically seconds to figure out what you want to drink. So I got to get that on the menu. And so my time is always spent in the restaurants. Um, let's flip the coin. Back to the back to the chain stores like your Kroger's of the world, which is the large Kroger's were the largest buyers of liquor in the world. Barnum. Really? Costco's the largest buyer of wine. Huh. Um, That's Barnum. amazing. Um, yeah. So my guess, so all of all of the off premise side, which is all of those stores, your chain stores, your Costco's, your Kroger's, and all that. That stuff's done behind the scenes with advertising. Like it, that stuff's like all the stuff that you see, like having the description of it's been in Sherry Cast for six years and it has the notes of honeycomb and caramel and butterscotch and all that. That stuff, that stuff's behind the scenes, put on paper so somebody can actually read it. And then that's somebody buys based off the description that they see either on the label. Um, I mean, just countless hours spent on labels on liquor bottles um as opposed to my stuff i'm just bringing in a bottle and getting it in in the consumer's mouth somehow and i got to do that by i'll say it's a terrible word by it by infiltrating into the bar by befriending the guy who's the manager of the bar or the bartenders or the waitresses and i give staff incentives and they push my wear. They're they're pushing. They're like my legalized little drug dealers. I'm a, here's my drug, <laughs> legal drug. Please go out and, and sell this for me. Um, and then flip the coin back over to the off premise side, the liquor store. It's a secret salesman that's there. I can't always be in the liquor store. We generally maybe in a week spend have people spend forty hours, and that's maybe twenty girls or and or guys that go out and do samplings not very much it's a secret salesperson with like the little tag that's right there that says come try me and has all the little keynotes on it and that's that's how that stuff sold um, those are impulse buys or by guys like you who are out actually doing good and educating people like hey this is really good juice we need to drink it you know um the almighty dollar works in my industry just so you know um well that, that brings up a good question that everyone asked a little bit ago <laughs> Um, how much money did Johnny Walker push for the White Walker? Because that White Walker has been pushed so hard. I didn't hear that. What'd you say about Johnny Walker? And then I lost everything. I so how did how much did Johnny Walker push, or uh, you know Diageo push the the White Walker? The White Walker is Scott. Oh, Jesus. Millions, man. They those guys, those guys don't. It's like dump truck. Diageo backs things up, and it's like a dump truck of cash. It just goes. <laughs> they, those guys. All right, let me let me explain Diageo to you. And that's the, really my world is like. There's there's really only like five big guys out there. You got Diageo, which is a Crown Royal, and Johnny Walker, and all that good stuff. And then you got Pernod Ricard, which is Chivas and Glenlivet. You got Beam. Which Beam owns Beam owns half the damn world. I mean, from all the bourbons to the scotches that they own to to the Kuiper, to Midori and Pinnacle and all that. Beam owns Beam owns a hundred plus brands. Um, then you got the little smaller guys in the world, but you know, like a Diageo, those guys just have dump trucks of cash. And what they do for items, and it's kind of like the Budweiser route of how Budweiser launches beers, and and Diageo does this with liquors. It's like taking a handful of darts handful and you just boom throw them at a throw it at a wall and see which one sticks that's what they do <laughs> the one that's gonna pay for all the one cash to do. do what i said the one that sticks is going to end up paying for all the ones that don't correct it's the one that hits ends up paying for the rest and then it's a, and then they just disband from these little marks here that they've had and then, hey we got a winner yeah really it's that, that Here's a crazy story. I want to give you a crazy story that, and it's it's a brand that none of you, you've probably all had, but you'll never drink again because it's awful. But Fireball, all right? <laughs> you know Fireball? Like it, it, Fireball in the state of Indiana 
the Fireball was the number one selling skew in the state of Indiana last year. Oh yeah, it, I it, that. it beat Jack Daniels. It beat Jack Daniels by about a hundred cases last year. Now, Fireball only became popular around 2012, but it's been out since the late 90s. It used to be called Dr. McGillicuddy Hot yeah. Cinnamon Pops. Then they did a bottle change, and then it became the hottest product that it's ever been. <laughs> Same so way goes with anything else in this world. You're paying for a little makeup on, I got to hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, I got to say, Sean did a review of cinnamon whiskeys, and Fireball was in that. And it got a good review if you're drinking it if you're drinking it neat. If you mix it, maybe not so good. That's true. Oh, Fireball. It, I don't, it, it have to go up against uh, uh, cock and uh, <laughs> what was the other one? Hellboy. Hellboy. <laughs> Hellboy. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, that stuff did. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Who do you think I bought it from? Hey, hey, Canadian whiskey at that. That's the funny part. It's Canadian whiskey, so it's not, it's not even American whiskey. It's Canadian based. All right, so no more talking fireball on our show. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, there's not really much science in my industry of like what product works and what doesn't. It's just, you know, we're like throwing darts at a wall and if shit sticks, it sticks. It's kind of crazy. So in your guys' world, it's fascinating because your world, I mean, it's so much, the craftsmanship that goes into your product and this, it, it, the, the small amount that it adds up to in my world that we actually sell, it's like it makes me it brings a tear to my eye. Because there's actual true craftsmanship that goes into your product, as opposed to the mass crap that I sell every day. Unfortunately, you know, in my world, we always have the saying vodka pays the bills. <laughs> well, anyway, you know, honestly, we we kind of um, we we kind of got alluded to that a while back. We were we were talking to someone and and they kind of opened my eyes a little bit too. I think Mark was with me and they were talking about, you know, we, we obviously were scotch lovers and we get that and we, we get bourbon, et cetera and stuff. But we were, you know, we were just talking about how awesome scotch is and how much, you know, you know, it's, we think it's a good markup, but we find out honestly to your point that that's great, but it's a, such a small percentage of people that actually buy scotch, like a really, really small percentage. And it's all go, it all goes to beer and it all goes to like what you said with the fire fireballs and, and some bourbons and and some and cheaper stuff. The quantity, not quality, in some of those matters. Mm -hmm. I, I got a question for you, and this is an Indiana question, and I don't know how much you can tell me about it. So when we go into liquor stores, you know, we hit them all, and we, honestly, we hit every, even the little ones, because we're looking for old dusty bottles that have been sitting on a shelf for twenty years, and they don't know what they have, and you can usually steal it from them, right? <laughs> um, but you go into a liquor store and you get to build a rapport and you, you're standing there staring, looking at the shelf and they'll say, well, what are you looking for? And you find out that there's this little book that they got behind the counter that they're not really willing to let you see, but they'll flip through the pages and they're looking for something. And you're like, what's, what's the story behind that? What it's like, there's a little green wizard behind the curtain. And I just want to know, I, I want to know how to get that product in here. Right. I, I don't, it, it just upsets me when I look, next door at Ohio and there's a bottle and I can't get it here in Indiana. It, but the liquor stores, they all have this book that they look through and they're like, yeah, we can't get it in Indiana. And I'm like, well, what the hell does that mean? Why can't you get it in Indiana? Sherbier doesn't carry it. Why don't I? Yeah. I, don't, I need, doesn't. It, the strip, we don't carry it because for some particular reason it didn't test well in our market. Okay. And, and, then, and if you want it, then like Sean sometimes would ask me, Hey Mike, can you get this for me? So then I would go to, I would go to the, to the actual manufacturer and say, Hey, I need this allocated in for the state of Indiana. Can we make that happen? And then they would say the importer or the producer. And they're like, ah, let me see. Sometimes there's different state laws. Sometimes uh, I couldn't bring in a product because of a state law or because it didn't have so something that was some verbiage that was supposed to be on a label. Um, it's all different. Every state has different laws. Um, so it's kind of crazy there, too. It's kind of navigating the seas with a ship. You're like, you know, it's like trying to miss this iceberg and this iceberg and this iceberg and this iceberg. And like, 
Ah, oh, you know what? I can't bring that to the state anyway because the verbiage on the label didn't say that I, it, it doesn't qualify to come in the state of Indiana. See, that's uh, something that man. I didn't realize because I mean, I I knew that there were certain bottles that you just couldn't get, but I didn't realize that it got that particular, like the labeling or you know the the bottle parameters didn't fit certain things or whatever. Um, I mean, that's that's disheartening. Um, just to to hear that there's oh, sure. hope on some of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. There's nothing we can do to make this happen. Nothing. Yeah. Nope. So, I guess Mike, I got a question for you. How do you guys feel in your industry about um, inter like inter interstate shipping and and uh, internet sales of products? Does that affect you guys at all? Or concern you at all? You're breaking up on me there. What did you uh, ask? Uh, how does how does the distributor end feel about um, interstate shipping and internet sales? Do you guys worry about that kind of stuff at all, or is it something that you feel is not really a big enough concern to, to even mess with? For, for internet sales, you say? Yeah. You were break. Yeah, you're breaking up really bad on me. I really uh, I heard uh, you know. internet sales. Our technical you know? difficulties. Yeah. yeah, a little better. We're, we're all having those tonight, I guess. Uh, so I want to know about uh, internet sales and like how distributors feel about it. Do you guys care about that stuff? Is it a concern for you at all? Um, not really. I mean, let's be honest, man. At the end of the day, anybody that's in our business or anybody that's in the circle of our business, we just want to sell booth. <laughs> I just want to sell booze. I, I mean, I, I think I got one of the best jobs in the world. I sell booze for a living. Um, I, I wake up every day happy that I get to actually go sell booze. So at the end, for me, I don't care. I mean, as long as somebody's having a good time, getting liquid to lips, you can buy off the internet. It, I'm good. I'm good personally good with it. Uh, I don't know my company's standpoint on it. I, 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 I hard hard for me to answer on that one. Fair enough. I mean, I didn't know. I, I figure that it's probably just basically the people that are online right now are the ones that are really doing it. Like nobody's going online to order a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> well, let me no, let's, let's, let's do it. That. Trust me. Let's change the, the the line of questioning to a different topic of of that affects us. It's affected us a few times. We're fortunate that Sean, like you said, was the general manager of a pretty established restaurant and we could pull this off but you know we've had invitations we've tried to get a guy from chicago down here to do some live tasting from an independent bottler but we can't do it because of the laws because as a distributor you didn't provide the liquor he can't bring it down and pour it for our tasting because we're not going through the proper process i guess yep distribution channels yeah there's a three tier Three tier system in the United States. It goes importer, producer, to wholesaler, to consumer. Um, so you have to go I'm through that. It, I'm gonna break it down to the to the reason why you can't. I'm just gonna it'll be one word. Taxes. Yep. Taxes. The, so the, the amount of tax. The amount of tax the federal government would lose for you to bring in your own cask and the import fees that they would lose and the taxes that they would lose, it's they're going to make it insanely difficult for you to actually get that juice in your hands. We know how that and is. Then you'd be breaking the th then you'd be breaking the three tier system that's been set up since prohibition. So the the question that's going through Drew's head, I want y'all to look at Drew right now. You see him over there? He's thinking. How much does it cost for a distributor's license? <laughs> what the hell? I, I can say that thing. <laughs> well, a lot. Come on, man. <laughs> Cut us in. A lot. <laughs> do, you want me to, do you want me to break down taxes for you? Like, I, 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 I give this example of how much tax is actually on alcohol. Would you, yep. you want to know how much tax is on alcohol? Yeah. Am I going to quit drinking? I, I bring, you tell me? Now I'm, I'm, 
I'm going to break it down to something like really simple in my business, but it's, it's, and I'm, I'm Polish and Italian, so we're not bright guys. So I like simple, I got to make it simple math. Okay. I'm like, I'm good at building tools, but not math is not my strong suit. So I'm going to take vodka. All right. All right. A case of well vodka, which is crappy. The, the worst juice you can buy that, that the average pub carries. That case costs 60 bucks, all right? $60. How many bottles? 12 bottles in that case. 12 bottles in that case. Five bucks a bottle, all right? I sell it to them for 60. That's what I sell it to them for. You know how much taxes are on that case? When I, when I bring it from the actual producer, how much in taxes that I get taxed on that case? 40 bucks. <laughs> are you kidding me? Forty dollars. What? No. Uh, uh, is that is that forty dollars? Is that forty dollars per case, no matter what the price of the vodka is? So if you're doing Grey Goose, it's still forty dollars a case. Is it based on alcohol or is it based on price? It's the alcohol. So imagine this: your the four hundred. So Maker's Mark, I saw for many, many years. So I'm going to break it down real easy on Maker's Mark. Just because Maker's Mark was about $430 for a case of Maker's Mark. When that Maker's Mark Kentucky and came into the state of Indiana, I paid about $204 tax on that case. So then I had $200 to play with as far as to get it out to the actual consumer. But I sold it at 434. I bought it at 200 of its taxes. So then I, I do it my markup. And then, so, but then you got to think of me trucks, gas, employees. I mean, the liquor system, that's why you'll never see prohibition again. The tax dollars, uh, that's why I was deemed essential business when COVID hit. <laughs> Good point. We are set. We are setting record numbers right now in the state of Indiana for the mass amount of liquor we're selling. And remember, we have an entire channel shut down. Five thousand plus bars and restaurants are shut down in the state, of Indiana, and we are setting records for shipments every single day. Let me give you a let me let me give you a number. I blew Sean away the other day when I told him this. So let's go last year. This today's date, last year, when shit was normal. I I shipped out about 17,000 cases of liquor on this day last year. All right? And that's with Costco, Kroger, Meyer, liquor stores, and then all the bars and restaurants being open. Tomorrow, I will ship out 34,300 cases. Shut I the front door. This look at the numbers. I got 34,000 cases going out tomorrow. And how many did you used to have? Same day. 17. Like yeah. one seven? Like twice. Like bar double. And More than double. My bars and restaurants just opened back up. And only at 50% capacity. So really, their orders are very minimal. Um, so... I actually, in the last two months, I've worked in the chain stores. I've worked in the Meyer stores, the Kroger's of the world. And I've been running out in Hendricks County, which in Indiana is on the west side of Indianapolis. So for all our listeners, just the west side of Indianapolis. Um, That's a, everybody a on your screen. <laughs> Meyer, in a seven-day period, right down the road from you, my man. I see you. Meyer Avon, I shipped 1,050 cases in one seven-day seven day work period. To my my card, card, one 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 one. Wow. Hey, <laughs> hey, you guys hiring? We, here's the first <laughs> wild turkey we bought. Here's got some breakers out there, y'all. <laughs> Jesus. You're, you're here's the three. You're, you're coming out. Here's my COVID. Here's my COVID uh, thing I'm coming out of. You're cut two or three things. You're coming out of COVID. You're coming out. You're coming out a hunk, a chunk, or a drunk. More than likely, you're coming out of chunk and drunk. So that's my, that's, that's my that's true. Uh, that's quarantine. That's the quarantine two out of three for me. Um, but yeah, is, it's 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 a, a mass amount of booze that we're selling right now. 
with one channel being completely shut down. Uh, yeah. And here's the problem. Come October and November, I'm going to have a huge shortage. I'm going to be out of stock on a lot of things because we're, we've sold everything. We're like, we're outpacing what they can, can actually produce because you can't speed up the aging process. There's, you know, Doc Brown hasn't gone back in his time machine yet and tried to speed up all the process of all these cats. You just can't do it. Um, I'm out of Woodford Nerve right now. Just really? Name a product. I'm out of Woodford. Wow. I, I, I am out of, I'm out of 375s and 750s. Well, I guess I that's going to be on my order one tomorrow. Or what the is. <laughs> Time to buy some one, one, seven, yeah, you order five, one right? So Time to buy some handles. Yeah. Well, well that's just one product I'm out of. I'm out of a lot of stuff. There's, there's, uh, the list goes down. I'm out of a lot of rums because the rums actually, vodka you can make, I can go make it in my bathtub tonight if I wanted to start making some vodka. Let's, let's be honest. Yeah. So that that all for right now. Um, but stuff for that takes craftsmanship. I'm, I'm gonna be running out of it. It's crazy. We're all moving. Good problem to have for me. So, Mike, I know that everything is being drunk at a higher rate. Are there things that are being drunk more than others? Like, are people going for vodkas? Are they going for bourbons? Are they just hitting everything hard? All right, Here. everybody's everybody's buying vodka. Even if you didn't buy vodka before, you're buying it. Here's why: because it's the people the people that have never drank vodka they just bought vodka to use as hand sanitizer, and that's no joke. I I also sell Everclear, and we're we're actually outselling Everclear right now because they're using it as hand sanitizer. This is no joke. I'm not bullshit you. So. Um, Svedka vodka right now is far outpacing any product in the state. It's actually outpacing Fireball right now um, and Jack Daniels. Um, but people have really gone to the high end stuff. People are people have more brown spirits. They're drinking more bourbons that you can actually find because let's face it, you can't get allocated stuff. Um, but they're drinking more Woodford. They're drinking more. Um, help Knob Creek's out of stock. Uh, Knob Creek's out of stock. The entire state might be for the rest of the year. Um, wow. they're, they're drinking more, gosh, I, I can't, I've, I've seen more Chivas and, and Glenn Livet, um, leave the shelves than I've ever seen before. Um, it's funny, the brands that are selling and the brands that are, so, um, um, I'll tell you a brand that I've, I've, it's crazy. On that note, to bring it back to your, Callan, your, I can't, your infamous taxes statement to bring it back home though. So you're, you're, they're, you're selling more of this stuff. There's a high tax on it. And yet there's still this 25%. I don't know what we're even calling it anymore. But is, is that affecting your prices? Oh, the, tariff. the tariff, is that hitting the shelf? Uh, I miss, I heard tariff and then I, but I missed the previous. Part yeah. Of that. So I, I'm just, so you, you just got done saying how much you're selling and it's a record amount. There's a lot more Brown spirit going out and a lot of it, some of it's coming from Scotland and there's a tariff on these whiskeys. Um, is that hitting our wallet on the shelf from your perspective? The thing with us, we buy so heavy. We, we bought a product heavy like so let's say we scotch um let's say we let's say we normally buy a container of scotch to come over we'll buy a container well before the tariffs hit the rndc we bought the ship we didn't buy a container we bought every container on the ship that way it's not affecting right now um However, what really got affected, like let's take Bailey's, for instance, Bailey's Irish Cream. Bailey's Irish Cream, go to Kroger. I challenge you to go to Kroger right now. You know how much a fifth of Bailey's Irish Cream is right now? Almost $30. Wow. So oh. they took a huge hit. They wow. took a huge hit. But Jameson, Jameson um, which I sell, they didn't take a huge hit because we shipped so much Jameson over into beforehand that it didn't get tariff. <laughs> the Asio didn't do that. The Asio said, yeah, we're not going to do anything. So then you got a product like Bailey's, which used to be sold for $17.99 on the shelf, and now it's $34.99. Jesus. So it just depended on 
how you pivoted. It's like in life. How did you pivot when you were faced with adversity? Did you pivot left? Did you pivot right? Or did you just stand your ground and not do shit? And what did you do? Well, R and D C we pivoted left and we pivoted right. We definitely didn't sit around, so we just ordered heavy. Um, so that's why you have it. If you go out to the shelf, you haven't really seen a tariff problem. I see. Just out of curiosity, how much does a ship of liquor cost? <laughs> <laughs> Do what? I said, just out of curiosity, how much does a ship of liquor? <laughs> I still you... hear you. Man, I run a hit this question. I definitely got an answer for it. I'm not what? So you said you said when we when you uh, you bought you didn't buy a case you didn't buy a, a, a container you bought an entire ship of whiskey. How much is a, a ship, ship of liquor cost? More zeros than I got in my bank account. I don't know, man. <laughs> there you have it. There you have it. That's awesome. So obviously, do, so we didn't talk about this earlier. What kind of uh, sales? does R&DC do over the course of a year? What's their, is it a private company, public? What's their kind of their sales numbers or can you share that? Uh, R&DC is public company. Okay. Yeah, R&DC is public company. Uh, NASDAQ, uh, we're, it's so Southern Wine and Spirits, so. So what, really, what, is, really their, what is their annual sales in, in, in liquor? You know what, I should have looked that up before. I should have looked that up, but I should have known. I don't, it's billions. Okay. So they got buying power. Right? Lot, right. You can buy ships of whiskey and ships of Japanese whiskeys and wines by the by the fleet. Yeah, I don't know if I'm I, I, to I, I, don't know, I don't know if that costs. I mean, it's we're, it's a bit just billions. R and D's billions. It's a, it's. I could probably Google it right now and figure out. Hold on. No, you go ahead. I'm Google. sure one of the one of the people watching will Google it for us. Yeah, Google, Google R and D C USA. Google how much we did last year because it's a lot. Staggering, actually. <laughs> so, how are those bonus checks looking, Mike? <laughs> Listen, my bonus. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I'm. You see the smile? It's ear to ear. It's like it's. I'm good. I got a nice tan. I golf all the time. I'm good. I live the bachelor life. I'm. I'm chilling out. I'm hanging out talking on Scotch for Dummies at 10 o'clock, and you don't hear a wife or a dog, man. That's because I'm golfing. When I'm <laughs> oh, you're killing me. <laughs> I've been an honest guest on for once. You know, I'm not giving you bullshit. Well, I've known you for hey, oh, Sorry, though. Sean, Sean, I know you're dying to ask me. All right. How are the bonus checks? They're really, really good, especially right now. But I was in Scotland three times last year, if that tells you anything. And here's the other funny part for everybody on this everybody on this thing tonight. I actually don't drink. So I haven't drank in nine years. So I, I get to go to all these fabulous distilleries. And I, the smells for me, I'm actually drinking when I smell something. I mean, I can pick up notes of the butterscotch. And I can pick up notes of caramel. And I can pick up every single little nuance because I don't drink, because I don't smoke. And people are like, oh, my God, what do you do for it? Like, oh, my God, what fun do you have? Trust me, I have a ton of fun. <laughs> However, I, I can actually pick up more notes than a guy who actually tastes liquor for a living. And so the actual, when I go over there, they're like, I want, I want you to smell, mate. I want you. You tell me what's in it. And so that's the fun that I get to go have. I get to go have fun. I get the sn sniffers. You guys get the opportunity to taste all of it. But I actually get enjoyment just smelling it. It actually just, it's. <laughs> No one here drinks either. The whiskey mystery guy. I like that person. Um, that's Phil. I'm drinking, yeah. I'm drinking water right now. That's it. I'm, it's water. Um, but no, so my, my job doesn't suck. I'll tell you that. It's pretty fucking cool. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Scotland. Please go. All you guys got to go. We were I supposed to be leaving in a week. Do what? I said we were supposed to be getting on a plane and taking 25 of these subscribers with us in about a week. Oh, that's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. Oh, well. Although, I bet we wouldn't have ended up with a picture of the queen like uh, Mike did. You got a picture of the queen? Not with her. Oh. Well, uh, so he could have reached out and touched her car. That would have been cool. <laughs> it would have been cool to see you get up for doing it. <laughs> 
Scotland. My last trip to Scotland. So my so my girlfriend lives in Scotland. Uh, my girlfriend is she's Italian. She owns a business in Scotland. So the very first time I go to Edinburgh, I'm in Edinburgh. Not even in Edinburgh three hours. I got an Indy 500 hat on, and uh, all of a sudden there's just people putting up these barricades. And there's and I'm I'm a guy. I'm just kind of wandering the streets of Edinburgh. I'm like, and I'm a friendly dude. So you can't tell. And so I go up to this cop and I'm like, what the hell's going on? He goes, it's parliament, mate. Celebration of parliament. And I'm like, what the hell is that? He's like, you're from not around here, mate. I'm like, no, I'm not from around here. Indy 500. What do you know about that? I was like, everything. I live seven minutes from there. I, I work every I work every Memorial Day. Why didn't Alonzo make the race? I'm like, oh, man, he had a shit in the car. He goes, I want to hear about it. So I go behind the stanchions. So I'm walking with the chief of police, it turns out, walking down, and I've got pictures of all this. I had to show Sean. He was like, this story sounds made up. It wasn't. So I, I'm actually, I was about three feet from the Queen of England three hours after I got off a plane from, uh, that time I went, flew through Toronto. So it was Toronto to Edinburgh, three hours, and I'm seeing the Queen, Queen of England, in her, in her Bentley uh, with Prince Charles, and I could have reached out and grabbed, I could have reached out and shook Charles' hand. It was Crazy, it was insane. So you should have tried. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he'd been one hand short now, though. <laughs> 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 guns on his, his life. Every <laughs> ball goes in the woods. <laughs> uh, yeah, my wife doesn't like me in the liquor business. And my mom was like devastated when my twin brother and I, and I have an identical twin brother in the liquor industry as well. So works for the same company. My mom was like devastated 20 years ago when we went to work for Budweiser. You're gonna turn out just like your dad. Now she's like, "Hey, you boys, did good." <laughs> oh, man. I think both you and your brother turned out all right. <laughs> no, we're not bad guys, man. That's for a couple knuckleheads. Ah, we appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, well, Mike, I appreciate you coming on and giving us some behind the scenes on distributors and what you guys do. And I mean, it's interesting to talk to because. The stuff that goes on behind the scenes for this industry, we don't have any idea of as consumers, and I think it's fascinating. And it's different all around the world. We got subscribers log logging in, or you know, if you've been paying attention to the chat, there's people from Scotland, Poland, um, and, and everywhere in between. To be honest with you, so they're they're going, man. You all need to move with those taxes. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't want to pay a twenty percent back, so I gotta say there's a balance. There is a bad. So there it's go. interesting and it's educational for us to understand. You know, here's the crazy thing that I find out when it, when I went over to Scotland, how many brands I saw that aren't distributed over here in the United States, like anywhere, and that was fascinating to me. Um, and it and the bad part about it is it all comes down to money, and they just don't have the money to get it the vehicle to come over here and it really sucks because over there i i was privileged to smell some of the finest stuff i was like oh my god this is the most amazing thing i i've never heard of this so right. i'm really excited for you guys to be able to go over there and you'll you'll see brands you'll be like what the hell is this never even heard of this brand and uh, what sucks is it's because there's no backing behind it and they can't get it over here um and that sucks for the consumer over here in the united states because they can't actually taste it. They don't know what it's like. Um, it's funny when I go to our Canadian distilleries and uh, you know, they're, they're interesting distilleries, but you ask Canadians like, oh yeah, we, I, 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 I sold Crown for years. And they're like, Crown, <laughs> that's garbage. We don't, we don't drink that shit up here. And you're like, well, what do you drink? And, and, it, and, then, and then they introduce you to, to like what they drink and you're like, holy hell, like this is really good freaking whiskey like this is the blended crap that we're used to in the states and they're like yeah we send you our crap and you guys drink it like it's the best shit ever. you know so it's funny so i can't wait for you guys to go over there and actually taste it um it's like when i worked for budweiser i worked for budweiser early in my career and when we went over to ireland budweiser didn't taste anything like it tastes over here it's right. completely different taste like it, it tastes nothing like it so it's funny from what's in one area to what's in the next, what ingredients, what ingredients can go into like just the beer, what, what ingredients they can put in, what preservatives they don't have to put in. Um, it's kind of nuts. We actually were so regulated here in our country, what can actually go into the bottle um, that sometimes we, 
you lose the taste and you actually lose the true form of, and the true spirit of what it was actually distilled to be. So can't sure. wait for you guys and your describers to actually go over there and taste and just see just the years of craftsmanship to go see their barrel cooperage, to go see how they make barrels compared to how my guys down in Kentucky make barrels. Um, that was fascinating as well. That was insane. Um, really cool. Um, very cool to see like how they use, you know, in your world, you know, how smoky is it? Everybody, t you know, somebody who doesn't taste scotch on a regular basis, like, oh, I can't drink scotch. I tried my dad's when I was 14 and uh, it was a smoke bomb. Well, to actually see this, how they use the peat over there to actually, and it was one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. Yeah. I was like, like yeah. this shit is cool. Like, I wish everybody could see this and you get an appreciation for it, but we're so ingrained in our culture here. And, you know, what, what my grandfather drank, my dad drank, my dad didn't drink, but I drank what my grandfather drank. And it's a generational thing. We actually never deviate out of the crap that we ever really, it's um, true. Yeah. Know, that our parents are for, you know, we miss out on so much just because we're just, we're so, um, media driven and we're so just it's got to be the commercial brand when I sell and just so you know I, before I let your listeners go in my house in my distributorship in Indianapolis I distribute 3,850 different SKUs of wine oh. and, I, and I distribute 1,974 1,974 skews of of liquor from you know vodka to uh, gin the rum the right to mm -hmm. gotcha. so i'm almost two thousand skews of whiskey you know of, of spirits and 3500 skews of, of wine so you're like how do you pick well we've got a wine we have three wine divisions um we have three liquor divisions that that have salesmen that go out and sell and and how does stuff reach how does stuff reach sean well i'm going to tell you this stuff reaches sean because i have an incentive from highland park to go out and sell sean highland park sometimes the stuff that we sell is based on what the supplier is incentivizing us to sell just so you know yeah because sometimes the best sometimes you, the best you have any idea do you have any idea how many of those skews that are whiskey or their liquors are scotch? Is that, have you broken it down by that detail? Man, I, I missed half your question. Sorry. So how many of the uh, stock keeping units do you have that are scotch? Do you, do you have any idea? You've got over 2,000 you know, 2, skews that are, are liquor. Is oh, how many are scotch? Or scotch? You know what? If you guys want to hang tight, I can tell you. It's hundreds. <laughs> I, would actually, I would actually have to go in my I have a I have a well actually I can't because this this beautiful iPad that I'm on right now houses every liquor that I sell. So I would have to get I would actually have to log out to log right. into this that's, hundreds. That's fine. I just I was just curious. So no scotches, hundreds of different different scotches. Mm. Yeah, and I know scotch is a much smaller portion of your of your uh, definitely of the volume that you work through, and so you know vodka, clearly vodkas and Fireball are blowing up your uh, up your liquor selection. So I was just curious on you know three thousand give or take wines, two thousand whiskeys, scotch is maybe a hundred or two hundred of those. It, it'd be interesting to know that. Don't don't log off. We, I'm just you curious. Know, let me. You know what I can give you though to kind of answer your question? Let me give you a percentage of what we actually sell. All right. So okay. all those of all those two thousand. Yep. Thirty three percent of what rolls out of my warehouse is vodka. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, thirty three percent. The other thirty three percent out of my warehouse. Now this is not indicative of every warehouse in the country, but I am in bourbon country. So 33% vodka, 33% bourbon. That's what's rolling out of my warehouse right now. And I'm just breaking down liquors. I'm not breaking down wine. Wine's That's a whole my volume, thing. right? Yeah. So then between the other, between that other 33, give or take, um, the rest of that is tequila, rum, scotch, 
cordials. So if I had to break it down to scotch, maybe nine to twelve percent out of everything I sell scotch. Very, very small. Yeah. Are you still coming and talk to me about it? <laughs> and I appreciate it. Yeah, right. Well, that's what you love, and that's that. And I live too, and I lived right around Rick's Boatyard, so I might as well come and talk to you about scotch because. I'm not selling it to everybody. I got to sell it to you. I got to get it out of my damn warehouse somehow. <laughs> That's the truth. So is your, is your profit margin based on price or volume? Do you, what, what, what do you got? Is, uh, is there... Profit margin. Um, we profit more on... Uh... Man, that's a mixed bag right there. Okay, well, that's fair. Yeah. We really... I, I say for me, we profit more on the higher end items just because the higher the, the higher I get taxed on something, the more I'm going to mark it up to make profit. So I, I profit more on bourbon right now and on scotch than I did. Like true profit. I profit more on that. Wine is the most profitable. Wine's the most profitable by far. Wine, wine okay. is more profitable than liquor in my world. Right. There you go. It heavily is taxed. So. Yeah, tell tell Tom I wish I could help him import it. Jesus, I wish I could. Like I, I, like I wouldn't have asked you. Tom did. Man, um, can I help? I might be. A, I could try to help the process. That doesn't guarantee that I can get it to come in, but I can help help the process. And I can, depending on what it is, and if it's something that we don't carry already, it's actually easier for me to import something that we don't carry already than it is. That if it was another line extension from a Glenn Levitt or a Johnny Walker or something else, because then it's impossible. But if it's well, a you won't carry one of these. <laughs> yeah, but if it's one of those that I don't carry, then I can say, hey, I can I bring this in? Can I, I can go to Dad and say, Dad, can, can I bring this in to the state of Indiana? Because I have I have a I have a uh, somebody who wants to buy it, which I'd have to run through a restaurant, but I, I'd have somebody who wants to buy this. And then they'd be like, yeah, 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 let's see, let's exactly. see what we can do. And there'd be a lot of red tape, but is it possible? Everything's possible, but, you know. All right, so we got one final question before we got to wrap things up. Um, Everwind, one of our subscribers, wants to know from your perspective, what should we be hunkering down on right here? So what should we be bunkering for the upcoming shortages? Right now, Scots lovers are watching. What should we do to be prepared for when you run out? <laughs> I, I I think scotches are going to be fine. Um, Interesting. As far as I think scotches will be fine. As far as you're not going to see a shortage just because there's. I mean, the, seriously, the the average consumer like the Scotch Isle barely get. I stock the Scotch Isle. I'm going to be honest. If there's 50 scotches on that on the shelf, I might stock four of those a week. Like it, it's not much. And, and again, it's, it's Shivas. It's Shivas because it's blended and it's cheap. Um, Doors. And, and Glenn does it right now for some particular reason. You're, you're higher in marks. Just, they just don't go. Now, I will tell you this. As far as stuff that might be price hiked, like it's going to get hit with the tariff, do your research. And anything that Diageo sells, a, you know, Johnny Walker or any of that Johnny Walker family, um, or, or any, anything that's in that umbrella of Diageo, they didn't do a great job pivoting. So if that's one of your favorite scotches, do your research of who actually owns that scotch. Cause you can find it out. It's, it's public knowledge. And a lot of you guys already know, um, buy, buy that shit <laughs> before, I, before it goes up. <laughs> there you go, everyone. That's the, that's the sage advice. Well, Mike, I have stuff like Lafroy. You know, if Lafroy's one of yours, Beam did a great job of stockpiling. Um, Pernod Ricard did a great job of stockpiling. Um, Glenn Fittich, um, you know, a lot of these did a great pop. Uh, McAllen, McAllen did a great job of, of we, we bought a bunch to get it over here. Um, Highland Park did a, seriously a decent job. But some of your smaller ones, like, Man, I hate I hate your smaller guys are probably gonna get hit harder than anybody just because not please do not take this out of context, but in my world, they're not as viable a product 
as say a a, a, a more well known one because it's not going to move as fast. So we did we right. didn't deem it as viable. So we didn't we didn't buy more of it. Right. So right. That, and that's yeah. countrywide. That's just not Indiana. That's countrywide. That's that's somebody that's going to say, hey, well, how, how much of this did we actually sell last year? And then they go look at the numbers cross country, and they're like, ah, yeah, we'll leave that off the ship. And that's how. It, that's what it, <laughs> Deanston's going to be just fine. Just everyone, don't to- worry about it. Well, Mike, I appreciate you coming on and filling us in on all this stuff. I, we could probably talk to you for three hours and just keep asking you questions. Yep. You know, you know what? We should just yeah. come over and, and hang out in your garage and talk more about it. <laughs> come hang out in my garage. Hey, I've got some more I, questions. I no, I'm kidding. I'll, I'll, I'll. <laughs> yeah. Well, come see me at the hey, restaurant, Mike. Come on, hey, let me do this before we before we sign off, and I'm going to sign off. Obviously, you know I like to talk, so that's not a problem. Um, <laughs> please do this for me. Why don't you, like at the end of the show, have like the, your audience just put a list of questions they'd like to see answered, and then maybe on an email, Sean, I can pop you off an email to, like some of the questions that maybe didn't get asked or like nobody wanted yeah, to ask sure. the question. That would be or, awesome. Um, and then maybe, maybe you can do a follow-up or like send it out to your subscribers and say, hey, in case you didn't get a question because that guy talked too much, um, which I do. Um, <laughs> I'd be happy to answer anything for you guys. So That'd be awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate right. it, man. Hey, cheers, my friend. Come see me at the restaurant. Cheers. 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 Take care, guys. See Hang ya. on a second. We we have a, bl- a blind review to do, you guys. Yeah, I know. Um, so we are staying. We're not. We're not. I know we're a minute and thirty seconds over, but I had a blind review uh, set up for the dummies for the other three dummies. So everybody that's on, um, basically, my intent in this is I had a subscriber. One of our subscribers generous generously sent me four samples, um, with the intent of trying to put a blind challenge together. Stressing out over these f- samples, trying to put something that would have worked as a challenge, just didn't present itself to me. So instead I thought I would over the course of the next four live shows present a blind review to these guys. So <laughs> all right, so Zach, I just want to say that's because he was a guest and I, I, I had to. I, uh, we brought him on to talk. I, I got news for you. I I have known both of these guys for years and Mike will put you under the table at a talking uh, I, I was being generous and quiet because that's what I'm supposed to do. Anyway, so this, this blind review. Is this from a subscriber or patron? I said a subscriber. Okay. Is a subscriber also a patron? I'm not giving you any more information than what you have right now. You have a blind <laughs> bottle. That's it. So the goal is, you guys, what's going to happen? I actually have a, a pour of it myself. I've given these guys a sample of this this uh, this pour. Um, they're going to walk through it and and review it, not knowing what it is. Now I'm going to give them a, a wee bit of information as they start to get into this. You know, maybe it's ABV or maybe maturation as they start to pull the notes and stuff. But I want them to go through and actually score it, like you guys are watching a typical review that we might publish on a Monday. And then after the fact, I'll tell them what it is, and we can spend a couple of seconds talking about it. I thought it'd be fun, a little bit different take on a review of our, our scotch, our review. So anyway, have at it, guys. What do you get? I haven't right. tasted it. I haven't smelt it. I have, I have no idea what uh, what the notes are on this myself. So Everyone wants to know if it's a Glen. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a, uh, a brown sugar. Really? Oh, yeah. Hey guys, I... Real quick, just want to say a quick shout out to my buddy Mark here. He's been going through some rough times, but buddy, you know what? My heart's with you, man. Take care of yourself. We love you, brother. Hey, Mark. Cheers. 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 Okay, so it, I definitely get the burn. Mm-hmm. The sweet. I will tell you guys this much. Uh, it is natural color. Well, Dalmore's out. Tastes like Deanston. Um. No, mm. it's like Glen Goyne. Uh, I don't know about it. All right, well, forget. Don't try to guess it right now. Talk to yeah. me. So, is this a? I got one question. Is it a distillery offering, or is it like a a one off? No, or? no, not an independent bottling. No, this is a this is a label. So, and this is in their core range. You didn't ask to answer the question. <laughs> it's I a distillery offering. How about there? Okay, that, that was the question, and right. now it has been answered. All right. 
It, it is a distillery offering. It's a distillery offering. It's like 20 questions, only we're losing here. High ABV. <laughs> Seems like it's a high ABV to me. It's a higher ABV. I, I, get, I get the high ABV. I'm, yes. I'm going to guess low to mid 50s. There's no peak, guys, at all. Hey, um, does, no. the, does the audience know what this is, Mark? No, the audience does not know what this is. So, and Mark would tell them, but I'm standing right here. You know what? Super sweet. This is. Hey, you know what? If you want, I'll turn the comments off so I can't see them. That there's a there. Yeah, I'll do the same. Um, I'm not going to off. <laughs> no, Sean's got them right here. Right? <laughs> Just go to banners instead of comments. You can't see them. Yeah. So I'm getting. There's a little bit of wood on there, and I can't tell if it's if it's oaky or if it's cedar, but it's really light. It's not definitely heavily tannin. I'm not getting any of that heavy heavy um, nose on it. I'll give you your your cedar notes. It's it's got a woody quality, but it's not an oak really. Definitely not, and it's it's light. I don't know if there's coconut in there, but it, it, you know I'm not getting I'm not getting a lot of fruit like apples and pears and oranges and. I'm getting, I'm getting raisins, man. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So that indicates, is it maybe a little bit of sherry influence? I think it's sherry influenced. Honestly, I'm having a hard time getting by the ABV to get to what's underneath it. Oh, see, I'm having, I'm okay with that. I'm getting a lot. Oh. I, now mine's been sitting here. I, I put a cap on it for a little bit. And I think it's aired out enough that it's really just, it's almost sickly sweet. It's really sweet on the nose. Not, so, mid, not heavy, really sweet and light. Raisins, that kind of thing. I put a link. I put the URL to to this actual bottle out there on the distillery's website. So anybody that's in the chat can go and look and see and get all the details. They'll get the nose. They'll get the you know the palate, the finish, the ABV, the story behind it, whatever. Um, they'll get the, all the information they need from it. Good maltiness to it. I get on the palate. Good. Yeah, um, it's got nice. It's got nice. It's it's high. I mean, this is probably like. Yeah. 50, 58. 57. Yeah, easily. easily. Oh, yeah, the more I drink it, the I was more it's, say, it's low to mid. Well, but I was drinking oh. drink before this. Now that I'm just got uh, some uh, uh, deep, deep, deep raisins, cherries, a little bit of malt finish, oaky finish, uh, short, not very long, fruity, fruity palate. Um, uh, maybe, maybe a little bit of spiciness. Maybe all spice. It's um, doesn't linger very long though. I mean, just it's a subtle linger. It's got a slow to mid length finish. I need to put a little water on it myself. Yeah, uh, it, it needs water to open up. So, yeah, I don't think I have much left. All right, <laughs> I'll give you guys a little bit more. Sixty-one point one percent. Oof. Yeah, I sense. And I, I, I figured it over sixty because it really. I mean, it's even burning after uh, during the finish. It was still tingling on my lips, so it was it was hot enough to yeah. do that. So it's a cast strength uh, SMWS, perhaps. No, it's a distillery offering. It's oh, not a distillery. That's right. Yep. Um, hmm. Wow. Who puts up that kind of volume, that kind of heat? That's what I'm thinking. Mm. Well, review no, it. Don't right. it. We'll talk about it after the fact. I want you to review this scotch, not knowing what it is, and then I'll tell you what so it is. It's it, it's nice. It's got. I'm, I'm actually on the wave second. I'm gonna get to the water here. I put a, I poured some water in it. Probably, I'm down to 45, 40, 50 or forty five percent. You hit it hard. Well, I mean, there was only a little bit in the glass, so I, yeah, I might have hit it a little harder. I, than I, I went back and rewatered it. Um, I mean, it's it's a nice scotch. I don't have any complaints about it, but I also don't get as much depth and character as I would want. You know what I mean? The finish is a little short. Um, it, it's got some nice, um, like I get a little bit of burnt orange and some nice sugar notes in it. A um, little bit of spice on the finish, but it's not, I wouldn't call it overly complex. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm not getting, I'm not getting citrus. I'm not getting apples or pears or any of that. You get that, uh, kind of that sickly sweet, um, you know, right. Like you said, raisins, I'm getting brown sugar. I'm not getting a lot of floral content, no roses or lavender or any of that. No, nope. definitely there's no smoke, peat, seaweed, you know, bacon, right. you know, those kind of flavors that are rich and powerful either as well. A little bit of spot. Yep, Andrew's gone. Yeah, he's gone. I got um he was right on target. It's, it's some spiciness, it's got lots of raisins, lots of it's kind of spice. So it's oh, he's back. There he is. 
Well, you froze up. You froze up for like 30 seconds there. Yeah, we're good. You're good. I heard you up all the time. Keep going. So anyway, so there's – there's uh, not, Sean, to your point, it's not super complex, but it's got enough going on that that one-way trip, if you will, of that fruity, raisiny, nuts, uh, uh, kind of a spiciness to it. Um, I, I, my first, very, very, very first impression was teapot at first. Uh, but now I'm moving over to more like a tam do, like a batch one or something. It's kind of more of that – that kind of substance of that free and kind of um, short finish. Okay, so just to give you guys a heads up on what's going on, uh, yeah, I did put the link out there, you guys. I'll repost it again. Um, maybe it didn't post because on the comments, everybody's guessing, and they're guessing all the same stuff you guys are guessing. But let me – What do you – what are they guessing? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. What uh, – what I, what are they guessing versus what I I don't I can't guess it this way I've never been good. Emma, we, we're, we're we're not trying to guess it in a sense. Right. We'll do it in the end, but we're reviewing it. So, yeah. question to you: What's the price range on our ballpark? Give me something. Can you oh. give it a ballpark? Um, I don't know if I. Uh, they stopped bottling it in 1983. So, um, <laughs> let's say 90 pounds. Okay. And is there a year, year statement to it? There is not. There's an NA. It's an NAS. Okay. okay. So, so we're going to say 120 bucks for an NAS bottle. At, at well, the, and, and I mean, honestly, you guys, I mean, with you guys knowing uh, how to, what we do, you, you see the color on it. You guys got yeah. the flavor on it. You know there's a heavy sherry on this, right? So can you discern? Is, is it PX? Is it Oloroso? Is it – do you know? Yeah, I, I, I think it's Oloroso. I don't get the flavor out of it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's good. I, I would say this uh, this is a, a really classy whiskey. It's not particularly, you know, complex, but it, it, it tastes good. It has a great uh, mouthfeel. It's a little hot. You could add some water and bring it down. But, you know, there's definitely nothing off pudding. There's no off flavors. There's no no bite. I mean, except for the alcohol, there's a little bit of heat there. It, it's really, you know, this is one you could share with most people and they would like it because it's a sweet, refreshing, light whiskey. And what? I wouldn't say light, but what'd you say? What's your, where are you going to score it? Yeah. Well, oh. Go ahead and give me the rundown. What do you, what's your. This is in the two, five to three range because, uh, you know, for 90, for 90 pounds, it's a little pricey, but for, for 90 pounds, but it's really a very pleasant whiskey. I could share this with any, almost anybody that has drinks any whiskey, and they would like it, because it's not, it's not on the edge. It's not edgy with peat or edgy with some weird funk or anything like that. Um, yeah, probably at ninety pounds, it puts it at uh, over a hundred bucks. Man, it's pretty good. Maybe two five to three is really the right, probably. Two five because of the lack of complexity. I'm gonna go with two five. I'll go, Sean. Uh, I I think um, mm, I'm with you. I, I think I'm I'm leaning towards a three right now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a three five. It's, I'm getting more dark chocolates now. That's kind of had time to set. I, I'll mm -hmm. tell you that the the ABV is strong. I mean, you you need to know that going into this because it's gonna kick your ass. Um, and it, it's you need to, it's gonna bite. You need to cut it down a little bit to kind of get some of those flavors. Um, it's but it's young because of that. Yeah, it's it's nice though. I mean, it's, you've got some freeness. I I wouldn't call it a sherry bomb, but no. bombish. It's got some to that, um, but it's got more of the sherry slash fruit notes to it. That I really like to it. Um, I think that it's if it's sat here, it's probably gonna open up even more. Um, for a non-age statement, we'll say a hundred ish dollars. Um, for what I'm getting out of it, the ABV is strong, so you can play with it. So that's actually a bonus point. Um, I'm gonna go three five. Wow, okay. The link that I'm trying to post for everybody in the comments, it won't post the link. You may not be able to because you're not logged in as us, but yeah, I, I mean, I could see a three. Oh, shoot, that's I could right. See a three okay. on this because it, it, it is really good, it's holding the water really quite well. Um, type I, out I, you add water and it doesn't diminish. The nose is still good. I'm yeah. having a hard time picking a number for this one. Yeah. Um, and, and here's my dilemma. Number one, I'm going to preface this with I've had seven or eight different whiskeys already. 
So I'm probably not in the right frame of mind to actually be doing a review. But um, I, I like this whiskey, but it's a little simplistic for me to go crazy on the scoring. Um, it's a really good, well-balanced glass. Uh, the high ABV is nice because you do get to play around with it. But I've added water three separate times um, just because I wanted to because yeah. it was so hot. Right. Um, but I really felt like I couldn't get to a lot of the, the flavors that I was looking for that I thought it, it probably possessed. So on my third go around, I'm probably down to around 40%. Um, and it's it's been remarkably consistent the entire time. I mean, it, it really yeah. has a very consistent probably agree with you on that. And, you know, on the one hand, that's good because – I mean, it's, it's got plenty of heft to, to hold on to water. It, it maintains its flavor profile. It's actually really nice. Um, but it also doesn't really open up and give me anything more than what it initially gave me. That's what I was thinking, yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, I think to Andrew's point, it's a very well-balanced whiskey. It's very nice. Um, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's not a lot of uh, – additional depth and complexity that I would look for to, to give it a higher score. So I was between a two, five and a three. I think I'm going to stay with a two, five at this point. Although I'd, I'd really like to come back to this whiskey, like on a fresh palate. And try it <laughs> because I, I just, I feel like I'm missing out on something that I, I might get if I was a little bit more ready so to do a review. You've all scored it. Two, five, Andrew, two, five, Drew, three, three. five. Okay. So, no, I, it's kind of not fair because I actually know what it is. But I'll talk to you about my perceptions on this because I didn't okay. take it before. And so I'm with you guys, neat, and, and um, I've watered it three times myself because 61.1% right. damn well it needs it. I, I'll tell you what, this last watering has changed it. I get a lot more oak on it, a lot more vanilla. Um, before I got to this watering, the third pour of water on it, it was the brown sugars, the the deep rich cherry cherries that it Oloroso was coming out. And I couldn't get anything past that. And that and heat, you know, about that and yeah. alcohol. Now I'm getting a lot more oak and vanilla that's coming on. And I really, it's, it's fun. I really enjoy it. I think it's a good whiskey. I think it's one that needs time and needs water. I'm going to give it a three. I know what it is, but I think you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised when you find out what it is. I think it's been guessed actually by one of you. One of you did already mention the distillery. <laughs> I hope I didn't give it away with any looks. But uh, you guys want to take any shots in the dark now? Go for it. Let's see. You, you all get one guess at a distillery. No, I mean, I still, I'm sticking with Tamdu. Okay. Initially, I said Deanston. Just on the first sip, I'm going to stay with Deanston. No, Ding, 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 Drew, Tamdu. Yeah. It's a Tamdu. It's a Tamdu, just like the it's chart. It's a, it's a Tamdu. It's called Dalbili. And it's their second release of it. It's named after the train station that is next to the the distillery. The train station has been decommissioned for years or whatever. But that train station basically was the train station that brought all the casks in, the sherry. Because Tamdu's right. exclusively sherry, sherry yep. casks. So that, that train station has a, a huge part in their history. Anyway, um, Sandy has done – McIntyre has done two releases of it. Actually, the – Third was just released uh, in May of this year, so Dalbili Three is out now. They only produce a thousand bottles a wow. year of it. It's a special casking, sixty-one point one percent. Interesting. I think it's got the, the Tamdu profile when you when you know it. You're like, okay, I'll buy that. You're right, it's Tamdu. But it was interesting to see there there were a lot of there were a lot of Glendronic. Single casks, guesses, some Glenn Farkless guesses in there. Everybody, some Dean's, everybody yeah. was was shooting around that from the what we were saying and what they were seeing. But um, it's an interesting, it's a different Tamdu. It's not one that I've no. seen on the shelf. And I, I don't, honestly don't think you can get no, it. No, this was fun. I don't think you can get it anywhere on the shelf. I think you have to buy it from the distillery. And that's where I got the price was 90 pounds from the distillery. So It's so, not a bad price. I mean, for what you're getting. Right. Honestly, the, the balance of everything you're getting in the price was not bad. I mean, I know it's probably a little high for a non age statement, but I mean, it's got some good flavors to it, and, and you got plenty of wiggle room. So when it, uh, when you when you look at the balance of, of our score then, so there was a 3-5 and a 3. So there was a 2-5 and a 3-5. That balances it out of 3, and then a 3, and then another 2-5. So this is what, 2 
two nine or something like that. Two eight seven five, Andrew. Somewhere there. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Mark, what did you give it? Did you give it a score? I gave it a three. three. Did Greg just did do the math for us? Yeah, he did it for us. Thanks. Thanks Thank Greg. God, man. What is it? What 2.875. 2.875, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we need him around when we do regular reviews. What I'll tell heck? you what. This show could have gone on for about three hours. Yeah. Man. It's um, Real quick before we get off of here. Uh, Mike texted me. He wanted to thank everybody for uh, hanging out with him. He knows he talks a lot. Uh, but he wanted to let you guys know that a interesting fact about how brands are picked in this market today uh, is based on their social media following and how it looks. So if you want to pick up a brand in your market, follow them on Facebook. Blow it up. Shit. So we can influence. We can do yep. it. We, we can if we, we hit them enough on social media, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and you know, YouTube, YouTube, let them know hey, well, we need you here. And maybe it happens, but, um, boy, how long does that take? Right. I'm not getting any younger here, kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it was a fun show tonight. Man, it was really it was a lot of fun, man. Oh, good it's good to see everybody online. Everybody's having a good chat. And, uh, yeah. Lana Lou was playing Master of Ceremonies for us tonight. She was definitely chatting up a storm. It was fun to watch. But anyway, guys. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. We'll see you on the quick after show on Zoom, patrons. Cheers. Right on. Sláinte.